This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and here I am today still standing on the very peak or what was the bow of what is possibly Noah's Ark. I use the word possibly, but actually I believe these really are the ruins of Noah's Ark. They've been thoroughly scanned and studied since 1959. This exactly fits all the precise dimensions which are given to us in Genesis chapter six. Underneath my feet, we know from ground penetrating radar, there are levels, there are floors, there are rooms. And of course, the size of this object exactly is the same size as the dimensions given to us in Genesis chapter six. Wow, and I came here today because I'm teaching a brand new series called How to Float on a Sea of Destruction in the Last Days. You know, we're told in the book of Genesis that when the floodwaters came upon the earth, the ark was lifted up. The same waters which destroyed the world caused the ark to bowie on top and the ark was carried safely because they had listened to the Lord when he gave them instructions. And in the very same way that Noah listened to instructions, if we're gonna really survive and thrive in these last days. And friend, God doesn't want you just to survive. He wants you to thrive. But if you want to really thrive, then you have to have ears to hear God's instructions. God may be speaking to you right now, but you've not been listening. You've got to open your spiritual ears and say, God, my ears are open. Please give me instructions about my family. Tell me what to do with my finances. Please speak to me about my health. Lord, we're surrounded by so much craziness in these days. Please speak to me. Give me instructions about how to protect me and those that I love. And if you will have ears to hear, God will speak to you. In fact, when we come to Genesis chapter six, the Bible says, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So make thee an ark of go gopher wood and God begin to give instructions. But what if Noah had said, I don't like what I'm hearing. I think I'm going to ignore that. Then he and his family would not have been kept safely. He had to have ears to hear. And likewise, we're sailing through really turbulent waters in our times. And we've got to open our spiritual ears to hear what the Lord has to say to us. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm so glad that you have joined me. Today, we're going to continue the series, which is called How to Float on a Sea of Destruction in the Last Days. And here we have a picture of Noah's Ark floating on a sea of destruction. The subtitle says principles to help you sail victoriously through turbulent end time weather. And I think you would agree we're facing some turbulent end time weather. But my friends, we don't have to be capsized. We don't have to go down with everybody else. We can literally stay afloat. And by the way, not just stay afloat, but to stay afloat victoriously all the way to the end of the age. And in this 10 part series, I cover all the essential elements you need to stay afloat and to be victorious all the way to the end of the age. And it comes with a study guide. I love my study guides. And my friends, these study guides are just loaded with insights and information, all the historical points which I share in this series. It's all in the study guide because I really want you to get this teaching down deep inside you. And right now we're also offering you my book, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. The foreword is written by my friend, Perry Stone. I just love Perry Stone, and I'm so thankful for the foreword that he wrote for this book. And the subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. And I really like this book because it is just so practical and is not just a book of theology, it's to really help prepare you for perilous times. And at the end of every chapter, there are action steps for you to take so you can respond to what you have read. This would be a great book for you, a great book to give to somebody else because we really are living in perilous times. But hey, you can order all these things by going online 
or by giving us a call. And please remember that we want to pray for you. Just call the number that's on the screen right now or send an email. We're waiting to hear from you. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to release our faith according to Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, call unto me, I'll heal you, I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. And my friends, we will call out to God in faith with you. Now you can pray by yourself, but sometimes it helps to have somebody pray with you. And we would love to pray with you. And when we pray and get into agreement, Jesus is going to do something simply magnificent for you. So call us or let us know how to pray for you by going online or by sending us an email. But today, I want to share just a few testimonies about people who've reached out to us. One woman said, I want to thank the Lord for introducing me to this ministry. I know it was the Lord because He knows that I wanted to learn the Bible, but I didn't know how. And the reason I'm so grateful for Renner Ministries is because now I listen to the teachings, I download the audio or the study guides, and I've never learned so much about the Bible through anyone else. This ministry is such a blessing to me, and thank you, Rick Renner, for making the Word of God so easily understood and with so much love. This is giving me a new foundation for my life. I would never have been able to understand the Bible the way I do now if it wasn't for God connecting me to this ministry. Well, I want to say thank you. That means so much to me. But here's another testimony. Thank you for prayers from the partner team. I made my first call ever to the ministry, and God moved powerfully in my life. And a big thanks to Denise for her books and her teachings. She's so encouraging and obviously loves the Lord deeply. I pray for Renner Ministries and all the good they're doing to help people. Another partner said she received the monthly teaching letter in the midst of a lot of difficulties she was facing and wanted to say that because of what God spoke to her through the monthly teaching letter, she's walking through hardships with victory. She also wanted to say how much she appreciates the prayer support she receives from Renner Ministry. And here's a final testimony. We just called a woman, and after we finished praying, she broke down and said that before we called, she had been very depressed. And then we called. She said in tears, which she said she normally doesn't have, your call was not an accident. We want you to reach out to us as well because we believe there's an answer to prayer waiting for you. And we'll get into agreement, and Jesus will do His part. He'll move in your life. But hey, reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to talk about having ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I want to ask, do you have ears to hear what the Spirit wants to say to you? In the last program, we talked about having instructions from the Lord. And the Lord will give you instructions. But in order to receive those instructions, you have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to you. But let's return to Genesis chapter 7, verse 16 and 17. And in verse 16, the Bible says, And they that went in, that is Noah, his family, and all the animals, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Then verse 17 says, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, And it was lifted up above the earth. And there we have it again. The waters increased. And as the waters increased, it was a global flood that destroyed absolutely everything except Noah and his family and the animals that were on the ark because they had received instructions which they obeyed. And because they obeyed those instructions, they were literally lifted up above the waters of destruction and floated on top of the same waters that destroyed everything else. And in the end of the age, my friends, if we'll listen to the Lord and obey Him, we can survive and thrive, even though it seems there's a sea of destruction all around us. But last week, we saw that number one, you have to be sealed tight in God's ark of safety, which is Jesus Christ. Number two, we saw that you have to have the Word of God to steady you in turbulent times. Number three, we saw the importance of making sacrifices to bring God's presence to you when you're in a bad place. Number four, we saw that you need to know who your people are, 
who is the family of faith that you belong to because you need to be a part of a team to sail through rough waters. Then we saw on Friday the importance of having God's instructions. And today we're going to see the need to hear what the Spirit is saying. If you don't have ears to hear, you can't receive instructions. But today we're going to begin in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, the Bible says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. But notice those two words in the very beginning of this verse. By faith Noah, being warned. Being warned in Greek is the word krimatidzo, and this is very important because this word krimatidzo describes a business transaction, and it really portrays the relationship which Noah had with the Lord. It means to advise or to consult with one about important affairs, and in this particular case, it means to be advised and consulted by God, and literally it means being divinely advised, being divinely consulted, being divinely warned, and it tells us that Noah had a business-like relationship with God, and Noah saw God as the boss and himself as the servant, and he was to do whatever God told him to do, and because his ears were open, Noah was literally being divinely advised, divinely consulted, divinely warned by God himself. Now, I know that Noah himself was listening to explicit instructions which he was hearing from the Lord. But if you look at Noah's family, you find that God had been speaking to Noah's entire family for years and years and years. For example, his great-great-grandfather, Jared. Jared's name means shall come down. And it was during the days of Jared that fallen angels began to come down in larger numbers to co-mingle with women and have sex with them. And they were beginning to give birth to giants. It was a horrible time. But Jared gave birth to somebody named Enoch, who was also one of the grandfathers of Noah. The name Enoch means to teach or to correct. Enoch heard from God. In fact, he heard from God so clearly he wrote very ancient documents about what was happening in that time. And we know from the book of Jude that Enoch even prophesied about the second coming of Jesus at the very, very end of the age. These were individuals who were listening to the Lord. And then we know that Enoch had a son whose name was Methuselah. He gave his son the name Methuselah because it was prophetic. It means when he dies, then it will come. That's what Methuselah's name meant. And everyone knew when Methuselah dies, that's the signal that judgment is coming. But Methuselah gave birth to a son whose name was Lamech. And the name Lamech means lamentation or sorrow. And the reason he was so named is because the world was filled with so much lamentation and sorrow during his life. But he gave birth to a son named Noah. And the word Noah means comfort or rest. It was a prophecy that during Noah's life, comfort and rest would finally come to the planet from all the horrible things that were taking place. What I want you to understand is Noah didn't just hear from God himself, but his family had been hearing from God for a long, long time. And one generation passed revelation to another generation and another generation and another generation and another generation. And when it finally came to Noah, he didn't have to learn how to hear by himself because he came from a family that had ears to hear. And I want to ask you, are you teaching your children and your grandchildren how to hear? My friends, they don't have to figure it out by themselves. You can teach them how to hear from the Spirit of God. But that means you have to have ears to hear first. And I'm going to ask you again, do you have ears to hear what the Spirit wants to say to you? And by the way, I have a wonderful series called How to Know the Will of God. You ought to get that series. It will really help you develop the process at least the beginning process of having ears to hear what the Spirit wants to say to you. But Noah had come from a long line of people that had ears to hear. And Hebrews eleven seven says, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, and the Greek literally means not yet, not ever before, which means when God advised and warned Noah about what he was coming, God began to tell him about things no one had ever seen, no one had even heard of. For example, that a flood was going to come. No one had ever seen a flood. He told Noah to build the ark. 
in a dimension like nobody had ever heard of before. He began to tell Noah about things that no one could even imagine. But Noah had ears to hear, not just by himself, but he had been taught and had been given revelation by previous generations. Wow, do you see how important this teaching is? But the Bible says that Noah moved with fear. And these words in Greek mean that he took action urgently and seriously. And not only that, it says he prepared an ark. And the word prepared is really, really important because the very first part of the Greek word has the preposition kata, which means down. And it really means taking serious action, putting something very intense into it, which meant he put forth great effort to build that vessel. He urgently responded and began working on the project and he did it for the saving of his house. The Greek actually says, for the explicit purpose of saving his own household. But Noah had ears to hear. That's why he received instructions. So let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. It says, And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. But notice God said to Noah that it means Noah had ears to hear. He was listening. Verse 14, God said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. The very fact that God said, make thee an ark and Noah heard it means Noah had ears to hear. He was listening. Look at verse 15. And this is the fashion with which thou shalt make it. Now God begins to tell him how to make it, but the very fact that he received instructions means he was listening. Verse 16, a window shalt thou make to the ark, in a cubic shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Notice shalt thou, shalt thou, shalt thou. These were instructions. And the reason that Noah heard the instructions is because he was listening. And in fact, when you come to Genesis 6, verse 22, it says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He received instructions because he had ears to hear. Then you come to chapter 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. How did Noah know that God said that? Because Noah had ears to hear. He was listening. He was listening. And over and over and over as we go through this text, we find that God said and Noah heard. My friends, God is speaking all the time. He's speaking to you. You may not be hearing it, but God is speaking to you, but you have to have ears to here. And it's interesting that in the Gospels, six times Jesus pleaded with people to have ears to hear. For example, in Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. In Matthew 13, verse 9, Jesus said, He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. In Matthew 13, 43, Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. In Mark 4, 9, Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. In Matthew, in Mark 4, 23, Jesus said, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And in Luke 8, verse 8, Jesus said, said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And not only that, to all seven churches in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 2, 7, Revelation 2, 11, Revelation 2, 17, Revelation 2, 29, Revelation 3, 6, Revelation 3, 13, Revelation 3, 22, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, to all of the seven churches, Jesus said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith, unto the churches. My friends, God is speaking and God will give you all the instructions you need to sail through whatever you're facing right now and for the church itself to sail victoriously to the end of the age. But Jesus is still crying out and he's saying, please, if you have an ear to hear, then hear what I'm saying to you. And if you'll open your ear to hear, Jesus will give you the instructions that you need. Jesus is speaking all the time. But the fact is, everybody is not listening. So I have to ask, what about you? Do you have ears to hear? And if you will listen, first of all, if you'll listen to God's word. Secondly, if you'll listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he will begin to give you what you need for you and for your family 
to sail through these times in victory. And if you don't have ears to hear, then today say, Holy Spirit, help me to open my ears that I can begin to hear the instructions that you want to give me. And in Genesis 7, verse 17, we read again, And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. The ark was born above it all. It was lifted up above the earth and above the sea of destruction because Noah had ears to hear. He received the instructions that he needed. And likewise, you need ears to hear so you can hear what God wants to tell you so you can get it through, get through whatever you're dealing with in your life right now. Do you have ears to hear? And I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you to have ears to hear what the Spirit wants to say to you. Someone asked the question, what is the RIV? Well, that's a very good question and I would like to answer it. The letters RIV stand for the Renner Interpretive Version. And yes, I'm doing my own version of the New Testament. I think you know that I've spent a lot of years studying the Greek New Testament, and I'm doing my own version, which I call the Renner Interpretive Version. Not a translation, but an interpretive version, which means I'm taking the Greek words in the New Testament, which are just loaded, and I'm pulling all the concepts of all of those words into a new interpretive version to give a fuller meaning of the Greek words in the original text to those that are hungry to dive deeper into the wonderful Word of God. So my friends, that is what is the RIV, the Renner Interpretive Version of the New Testament. It seems we are surrounded by the swirling currents of destruction in a world that has gone astray. Many feel besieged by these tempestuous times and worry about their loved ones, praying that they will somehow survive the fluctuating tides. Noah and his family faced insurmountable challenges but God showed Noah concrete steps to ensure he and his family could rise above the confusion and float on a raging sea of destruction. In this series, How to Float on a Sea of Destruction in the Last Days, Rick Renner takes you deep into the specific instruction God gave Noah and shows how those same instructions are needed again now to survive and thrive in a world gone mad. In this 10-part series, Rick covers how to be sure you are sealed tight and safe, how to stay steady in turbulent times, how to get God's personal instructions for you, how to act with fearlessness when God speaks. This powerful series will help you fill your heart and mind with victory and will show you how to rise above the destructive tides. And it is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, we're also offering you Rick's book, Last Day Survival Guide, a practical and essential guide to help you protect yourself and those you love from the nonsense that is wreaking havoc in the world and it's available today for only $27. Order the bundle of the series, How to Float on a Sea of Destruction in the Last Days, and the book, Last Days Survival Guide, today. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You say, Rick, where are you? I'm in the central meeting room of the Tulsa office and we just concluded a wonderful staff meeting here. I wish that you could meet our team who ministers to our partners. That means they minister to you. They are so trained and they are so committed to minister to people who are reaching out to us from across the face of the planet. And when I say people are reaching out to us from across the world, I really mean from across the world because people are looking for teaching that they can trust. And this building is so important because this is where all the activity happens, particularly where we minister to partners and where we produce materials which we send to the ends of the earth. And right now, we want to retire the debt on this building because if we can retire the debt, it's gonna free up finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible further across the face of the earth. And if you're already a partner, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our giving team. And if you're not a partner yet, today I want to invite you to become a part of our giving team. Would you please join us? 
Help us retire the debt on this building, free up finances, so we can take teaching that people can trust to them wherever they are all over the world. And my friends, if we have to do it by ourselves, it's gonna be hard, but if we do it together, we can get this done. It's not about us, it's about people who need answers from the Word of God. So if you're a part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team. We have covered so much material today. Has this been good? Would you please reach out to me and let me know if these programs are ministering to you? And when you reach out to us, be sure to order your series called How to Float on a Sea of Destruction in the Last Days. It will encourage you, it will give you what you need to sail through turbulent times. In fact, the subtitle says, 10 Principles to Help You Sail Victoriously Through Turbulent End Time Weather. You can do it. You just need to know how. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. The subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. And please, you can order all these things by going online right now or by giving us a call. The number's on the screen. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because we really want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you right now. Put your hand on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you've given us ears to hear, so help us to open our ears. You have instructions that you want to speak to every one of us. Lord, if we're not hearing them, it's because we're not listening. You're so good. You're telling us everything we need to know. So help us, Lord, to hear what you're saying to us and help us to develop our ears, spiritual ears, so we can really hear what it is that you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, I want to remind you about that series, which you can get online called How to Know the Will of God. It will help you to begin to open your ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to you. But I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.